Fajitas is a timeless recipe. There's so many to choose from, and today we're gonna be making them in a sheet pan. Super easy, everything's just gonna get tossed together. It's one simple step, but there's a few details we need to discuss. First things first, we need to preheat that oven, which I already did to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Now take your sheet pan, which is empty, and just place it in there. We need that sheet pan to get nice and hot. Now let's get started on the marinade. Start by measuring out a quarter cup of avocado oil. We're gonna do a quarter cup of lime juice as well, freshly squeezed, that's the best you can do. I just wish I had a tree out in my yard like we did in Mexico, fresh ingredients. Oh, that would be nice. Nothing beats it. Squeeze those lime wedges in there. Thankfully, these are nice and juicy, which I'm always happy about because, oh my goodness, some of them are just poor, poor. <laughs> I've stuck with this recipe for a long time because it is just so good. And I do believe that a good marinade makes the world of a difference when you're making fajitas. Now do two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. It's just gonna add to that acidity level perfection. Two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. And I just have to say, it goes so well with chicken. So it's a must for this recipe. Four garlic cloves, you can mince them, but I'm gonna use my garlic press. Just gonna get them really nice and fine. By the way, if you're interested, I am gonna leave you the link to this fancy little tool that's very inexpensive down in the description area. We're just gonna remove some of that garlic that was left inside. Give it a fine mince because everything's gonna get used in this recipe. Add it in. Ground ancho chile, smoked paprika, ground cumin, some ground onion, I love it. Of course, we're gonna do kosher salt and some freshly ground black pepper. Everything's gonna get completely whisked in, especially that mustard. It's gonna make it really creamy and bring everything together. Set this aside momentarily and move on to the veggies. We're gonna be using three bell peppers and you can literally pick whichever color you like. The red one and the yellow one are gonna be more on the sweeter side. And if you pick a green bell pepper, it's gonna be more on the grassy side. Today, I decided to use poblano pepper because it has more flavor. We use it a lot here at home, so I always have some in the fridge. I'm just gonna start by removing the flesh, the skin, whatever you wanna call it, from the seed and stem area. Just slice it, you don't wanna make them too thin because you do want them to withstand to the heat of the oven. These are gonna go straight into this huge bowl, which I'm gonna use to toss everything in there. Now the red bell pepper. Yes, I know this one's huge, but what can I say? I picked it. Yes, he did. It's so funny because he picked the big one and a tiny little yellow one. They it have, works though. They had nothing else to choose from. Oh, really? Same thing, it's gonna get sliced. Let's do a whole white onion. We are gonna need two pounds of chicken and we need to pick a cut that's gonna withstand really high heat because they are gonna get sliced and we don't want them to dry out. For example, breast is not gonna work. So boneless chicken thighs it is. Plus they have a lot of flavor and they're so easy to work with. Talking about keeping them nice and tender, there's another step that's gonna help us achieve that and that is cutting against the grain. I know we've heard about cutting against the grain when it comes to meat, but it also works with chicken. And that's exactly what we're doing today. Take each piece and if you need to cut, you can do that. You can easily identify in which direction the grain is running, I can see it here. I'm just gonna take it and cut against it. Slice them as close in size as possible to the bell peppers. It's important to take out the chicken from the fridge and leave it out for about 15 to 20 minutes. That way it's not so cold when we cook it. Again, that's gonna help it cook more evenly. Marinade goes into the peppers and onion. And so does the chicken. 
Just mix everything to combine. Get that marinade well distributed. All right, this is good to go. Follow me. Just gonna place it here momentarily because I need to get that sheet pan out of the oven. And this is just gonna speed up that cooking process. Immediately layer those fajitas. And I have to say, it's all about that satisfaction of the sizzling as well. Arrange them in a single layer. I love this process because it feels like it's just easy cleanup. Don't get me wrong, I love the classic fajitas. You do get a little bit of splatter, totally worth it, but try this as well because it's amazing, perfect for any weekday. And if you're not into washing dishes. <laughs> yes. All right, let's put this back into the oven carefully. Now we're gonna cook them halfway. It's gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes. These fajitas are gonna release a little bit of juice, but that is fine because I have a solution. Solutions to problems. Not necessarily a problem, we're good to go because these are gonna turn out so delicious. Just take that and tilt it over a saucepan to get all of that juice released. Beautiful. This is going back into the oven to finish cooking, but this time we're gonna set it to broil and that's gonna be on high about 10 minutes to get a nice char as well. As far as the saucepan, we're gonna bring this up to a gentle simmer. And just allow it to cook for about eight to 10 minutes. We wanna make sure everything is well cooked and also the flavors are gonna intensify. Now remember, we've got all of those tangy flavors in there and I'm gonna show you what to do with it later on. Halfway through cooking, I am gonna rotate them. That way that color remains even all across. All right, the time has come and I don't know, I'm so proud. I am loving, love, love, loving this color. Just gonna double check that they are cooked, which I'm almost sure they are because they've been cooking for 25 minutes, but we just have to make sure. Ooh, so tender, I can feel it. All right, we are at 170, 180, which is safe. See, that's what I'm saying. These are still tender at around 185, which is great. Lastly, sprinkle some chopped cilantro all over it. I would say also squeeze a little bit of lime juice in there, but it's not gonna be necessary because this is gonna get those juices that we're cooking drizzled all over them, so it's gonna be good. And I already turned off the heat because this sauce or juices is already done. You can pair these fajitas with a nice portion of frijoles de la olla or even refried and Mexican rice, which I have two versions. I have a white and a red one, but, but, since Nelson and I had a lot of fun in Mexico, we decided we could benefit from a nice salad, pico de gallo right over it, and let's just do a little bit of Mexican style cream. I think I even grew a little bit of a belly. <laughs> that means he had a lot of fun. Let's do it to the other one. This is a dry type of cheese, but you can also do cotija or even queso fresco. A little bit over those beans. And if you taste these fajitas, they are packed with flavor. They're so, so good. Our lovely sauce that's had time to concentrate those flavors and just drizzle some of it right over those fajitas. Oh my goodness. I would call it liquid gold. It's just got all the amazing flavors of fajitas. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. This is so good. I mean, I'd be lying if I told you I didn't taste it already. <laughs> I like picked a little piece of chicken. That looks really good. Mm. And tender. My goodness, tender, so good. I'll share a tortilla with you. <laughs> Thank you. Those fajitas are top notch. I just love it. Mm. Love it. Mm. This is so good. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Sometimes people get the idea that Mexican food is unhealthy, but that's pretty far from reality, to be honest, if you make it right. There is, a, I mean, like any other cuisine, mm. <laughs> there is dishes that might be on the higher carb ratio, yeah. but 
overall there's so many amazing traditional mm -hmm. authentic dishes that are good for you although i think fajitas is more of the like the northern part of mexico in texas mm -hmm. because i'm from michoacan you don't really hear about fajitas i, I started mm -hmm. eating them once i came to the united states not all the dishes are popular in all of mexico but this doesn't mean that they're not good it's just that mexico is so big remember when your tia said that people in, in the pueblo they do not accept chicken that was basically gotten the day before it has to A be day from old. that same day yeah people don't buy it it has to be from fresh. the same day fresh chicken yeah we're picking <laughs> <laughs> we sounds like too much people <laughs> Well, I'm just joking. You guys don't want chicken from the day before. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good, guys. Mm. We're going to finish up this meal. I really hope you enjoyed it. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.